evening. Mr. Pete Fidge is going to talk about Wojciech the Bear. Pete Fidge. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's who I am. That's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, so I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, why this bear appears on this uh, bear mat. Uh, but before I start, we've got to have to. We just have to go through a quick uh, history lesson. Uh, 1939, uh, on the 1st of September, uh, Germany uh, invade Poland. Uh, two days later, England declare war, and World War II. Uh, breaks out, but the and, uh, and we're all kind of aware of that storyline. Uh, but the, the the other thing that happens that often kind of gets forgotten about is two weeks later, Russia then uh, then invade Poland uh, from the east. Um, they kind of uh, made a deal. Uh, Stalin made a deal with um, uh, with Hitler to basically uh, carve up Poland, and so uh, Poland was kind of uh, split in half between. Uh, the Russian-occupied uh, um, part, the German, the, um, uh, the Polish army was uh, quickly overrun, uh, and um, and the uh, parts of Poland, uh, in fact, included what is now Ukraine uh, at that point, and um, lots of uh, the Polish uh, army that was uh, captured by the Russians, um, they were uh, they were deported. Uh, they were sort of whisked away. Uh, people weren't sure exactly where they were. That what the what Stalin did is he separated out, uh, made sure he got he got all of the uh, senior um, uh, high-ranking uh, officers. Uh, it was about eight thousand in total. Um, they got uh, sent uh, off to um, the uh, Katyn forests, and they were uh, they were held there for uh, for several months, and then they were massacred. Uh, and uh, the population of Poland, uh, the Polish part, it was 35 million was roughly the uh, population of uh, Poland. So about 17 million were in the Russian uh, part of it. And 10% of the population were deported by, the, uh, by Stalin uh, to Siberia. So 1.7 million Poles. Uh, only f only half a million of those who were deported ever made it out of Russia. They were um, they were sent uh, from Poland uh, in cattle trucks. I mean, there was a, a couple of waves of them uh, in 1940 and 1941. Uh, so they were um, sent in cattle trucks uh, all the way from uh, from Poland. Uh, it would take several weeks, uh, sort of reports of sort of five six weeks. Um, uh, lots of uh, lots of those uh, poles uh, died on the way, and they were sent uh, mainly over to Siberia. So now my finger isn't uh, isn't tall enough, but um, but it's kind of we're, we're talking kind of above Mongo uh, Mongolia is kind of where Siberia is. Um, then in 1942, uh, Hitler invades. Uh, uh, Hitler attacks the the Russians, uh, and. Um, uh, and at that point, the Russians uh, join uh, the Allies, and the Russians uh, decided to allow some of the uh, Polish uh, their, um, Polish prisoners, who were by and large they were the younger uh, male population. They kind of deported them so that they kind of wouldn't be a problem there. Um, and some of them were allowed uh, to uh, to leave. They tried to encourage them to go back to the. Uh, to fight the Germans on the German uh, border, uh, joining up with a, a Russian army, but um, lots of them, the majority of them, uh, opted to go uh, with the uh, Anders Army, uh, General Anders, who led what's called the Journey of Hope, uh, and they left Siberia and worked their way down through uh, through Kazakhstan, uh, what was then called uh, Persia, which is sort of Afghanistan. And Iran is where our story begins, because those soldiers, uh, as they were making their way, um, uh, on the side of a road there was a, a young boy, and he had for sale a small bear cub. And uh, the uh, the bear cub's mother had been shot, and it was uh, it was an orphan. And the soldiers kind of um, took pity on this uh, little. Little bear. They thought it was rather cute, and so in exchange for some uh, for some provisions, 
uh, they bought uh, the bear, and here he is. Um, they called him Wojtek. Wojtek uh, is, um, uh, means uh, little warrior. Uh, and uh, so here we've got a couple of, of pictures. Now, note the size of the small bear cub. Um, uh, so uh, they fed him uh, initially um, using a, uh, they kind of hand reared him uh, using a, uh, a bottle with a sort of muslin cap. Uh, and uh, here we are, pictures of him being, uh, being fed. Uh, and, uh, and then they, they started making, uh, they continued their journey through uh, Iran and Iraq. And um, <laughs> no bear is growing, okay? So uh, this is what happens, you know, we've all, you know, maybe, you know, you've, you've got that boy, a small puppy, and not, uh, not quite uh, kind of uh, sort of worked out in your head uh, just how um, uh, big it was. Now, obviously because the, it, it had been reared from the pretty much from, uh, as a cub, it kind of, it, it became, it was very tame, uh, and it kind of pretty much, um, it, it saw itself basically as kind of as a human, and uh, and really connected with them. It, um, Wojtek absolutely loved uh, loved water. Uh, whenever there was uh, whenever there was a, a lake or a river or just a just a muddy uh, puddle, uh, he would just he would just love immersing himself in it. There's stories uh, that there was a uh, there was kind of a shower room, which was basically just a um, uh, was basically just a, um, a a bucket with water. Uh, and uh, Wojtek kind of worked out how to work out the shower and would go into the shower room and sort out um, and give himself a shower. Uh, and, um, uh, and so he grew uh, he, uh, and he journeyed south with them. Um, now he, I said how he, in, he saw himself as kind of one of them and uh, one of the things that he liked to do is uh, when they were having a beer, he would kind of ask for a, a beer uh, and, uh, and he would suck from it uh, like his comrades do. Um, no size of bear. Um, the other thing uh, that uh, they would do is when, uh, when they were smoking cigarettes, he would kind of ask for a cigarette and he would take a cigarette from them and then he would just eat it. Uh, um, this is, uh, I think Piot, his uh, handler, who will come on to it. Um, he really liked, um, it, it really liked her wrestling. No size of bear, okay? Um, uh, so uh, the, he used to sort of uh, really enjoy wrestling. In some of these pictures, you will see that he has a kind of a, a chain on him, but in lots of the photos, he, he doesn't. Um, and all the reports are that when he was, uh, when he was wrestling with them, um, that he would, um, uh, that, you know, he's, I mean, just look, I don't know if you can see his claws there, and yet there's no reports that anyone was ever um, seriously uh, injured uh, in any of the encounters uh, with him. Um, I'm going to show you, now this is one of those kind of blink and you miss it, this is the only um, uh, film footage uh, of him, and you will see uh, Wojtek wrestling, uh, wrestling with his men, and you kind of, you have a sense just of the power, but you realise that he was playing, because you realise just how much he's going to kind of he could have overpowered these men, but he chooses not to. Hopefully this will play okay. So, um, uh, now the, um, uh, they made their way south uh, 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 through Iran, Iraq, uh, and into Egypt. Uh, the soldiers were getting uh, stronger and fitter, they're getting trained. Uh, um, there was a complete lack uh, of senior officers, so they were all kind of waiting. The Poles didn't know what had happened to, uh, the, to, to all their senior officers. They were, so when the army was, uh, was formed, they were, they were kind of waiting as all, as all the soldiers came from all over, from various places that had been stationed in Siberia, they congregated and they and then they were waiting for the officers to turn up, waiting for the officers, and they never turned up. Um, and because they'd made, met that dreadful fate in the, in the forest of Katyn. Uh, and, so, uh, and so they had to train kind of uh, the uh, uh, new soldiers to, uh, to, to create um, their, their uh, 
uh, different levels of uh, command. And uh, they got to Egypt, and uh, and now they were ready um, for the uh, for their to see action. And the plan they were going to be part of the planned invasion uh, of Italy. Now, when they reached uh, Egypt, uh, the uh, British were in charge of the port and of trans uh, transportation of troops uh, across the Mediterranean. And um, and the uh, British said that uh, that uh, it was only working animals who could be allowed. Uh, they classed uh, Wojtek as a mascot, uh, and they said uh, so. You, you would have a, you would have a few cavalry uh, horses. There were some, some dogs that would be used um, for uh, for land communication lines, um, but um, but they said. So, uh, Wojtek uh, can't come uh, with you, and the Poles were um, were were distraught because Wojtek. They saw uh, he was much much more than just a mere um, uh, mascot. They saw in him a connection, uh, in some ways, of them. He was orphaned. He was a long way from home. He didn't have anyone else, and they had made this incredible journey from Poland to Siberia and down through uh, through Persia. Um, they didn't know where their families were. They were a long, long way from home, and so there was a real, real connection. I'm just going to show you these photos, and some of these photos I've already shown you uh, already. But I'm going to ask you not to look at Wojtek, but look at the faces of the soldiers, and you can see in all of them. These photos are quite blurred, but you can see kind of just the pleasure. Uh, that Wojtek uh, gave them, the kind of escapism from the, uh, from the life uh, that they had. So they hatched a plan and uh, they decided, they uh, went to the British and they said, um, they, they, they went uh, with Wojtek the bear and they said, uh, he's actually a soldier. And they presented with uh, official papers uh, and they, he, had, he, had, he was, had wages, he had a serial number, uh, and uh, and the British, uh, the British were like, okay, and they they could see they could see these poles meant business, and they just thought, all right, we'll let this one go, and so uh, and so he uh, boarded the um, boarded the ship uh, to go across uh, the um, uh, to go across the uh, uh, Mediterranean. Um, and uh, landed in Italy, and that's where he started to see a uh, proper active service. Now he he absolutely, whenever the soldiers were uh, were doing their work, sometimes um, uh, I mean sometimes he would do just what bears do, which is sort of climb up a tree or just sit around in a puddle or uh, or, or go in and uh, raid the kitchen stores. But often he would kind of he would lend a hand. Uh, so you're seeing here uh, um, uh, helping with uh, a tree log, and the other things uh, that he used to do is uh, the, the stories are that when they were unloading things off the trucks, he would go and put his paws out, and uh, and he would he would help carry the things, he would ca help carry the items that were being taken off the trucks, and this included um, this included missiles. The story is that he was seen um, uh, taking missiles, and I've seen a. Uh, a documentary where there's, a, where there's an English, English soldier who said he came around the corner, was totally unaware that there was a, there was a bear on, uh, <laughs> and I just saw a bear walking along with a missile in his hand <laughs> and, uh, and ran for the hills. And all the reports are that he was very, very diligent with this, very, very careful, he never dropped, uh, dropped one. Um, he then went on to, uh, the, the Poles worked their way up through Italy, um, they were in, uh, they, they saw uh, action at Monte Cassino, which is uh, in, in the European uh, theatre of war, was kind of one of the most, um, uh, the bloodiest battles uh, of the uh, Second World War. Um, I think some 55,000 uh, Allies uh, troops were either killed or injured in this. This was a monastery um, that the Germans uh, uh, had embedded in, that, that they just, they couldn't get them out. It was the Poles actually who uh, who were who were the ones who were able to um, finally make the uh, the successful assault on it. Um, and Wojtek the Bear was uh, was there as with part of the uh, artillery group. Um, worked his way uh, through Italy, um, and, um, uh, and one of the things one of the other things they used to do is um, they used to take him into town 
uh, and in their uh, and they used to park up their their um, their, their lorry while they kind of went off to uh, get stuff. And then you know, much like you might leave your your dog in the car just to make sure that nobody steals anything, uh, they'd leave uh, Voitek uh, Voitek there. Now uh, at this point, if you know. Uh, now he's become uh, he's become so famous and so intrinsically part of him that their uh, emblem for this division is actually as uh, is uh, Wojtek holding a um, a uh, a bomb. This is a um, it was the 22nd uh, division uh, that was uh, the emblem for him. Um, and the war finished in uh, 1945. Uh, large the the Poles. Kind of kicked around for a, for a while in Italy, not not for that long. But they were they were a lot of them. They were invited uh, by the British government to return to the homeland to start rebuilding Poland. But the vast majority of Poles, uh, seeing as they had just been captured by the Russians sent to Siberia, weren't exactly kind of um, falling over themselves to run back uh, to Poland, which was um, which was uh, still occupied. Uh, by uh, by Stalin, uh, so about 90% of the Poles uh, opted not to return to Poland. A few, uh, quite a few, stayed in Italy, but the vast majority uh, came to England. And uh, Wojtek the Bear came to England with them. Um, Wojtek uh, ended up there was a, there was um, lots and lots of army camps uh, sprung up um, all over the UK, full of um, full of Poles. In, in 1946, the the Polish uh, immigrant uh, population would be the largest immigrant population uh, in uh, in the UK, um, and Wojtek ended up in uh, just on the borders of uh, of Scotland, um, uh, in uh, near near a little town called Duns. Um, there, there was a there was a lovely um, uh, pool which they found no size of bear uh, for him to enjoy. One of the things that the, the soldiers used to do, there was a, the, 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 small, the small village town uh, just, was just a kind of a mile or two from where their camp was. Uh, and they used to go in on a uh, Saturday night, there was a, a dance there. And uh, the local, all the reports are the local ladies, uh, you know, they quite liked these, uh, these, um, these exotic Poles who used to come. And the Poles used to, uh, they used to come with, uh, with Wojtek. Um, and, um, you know, it was, it was a great kind of um, icebreaker. You know, when you, when, when you turn up with a dance with a kind of um, seven-foot bear, you know, people uh, well, they either run or they um, or they come up and uh, and chat to you. Um, apparently, Wojtek li uh, likes the sound of music. Used to uh, used to dance uh, dance with them. Um, apparently, the uh, the local male population were less than thrilled uh, with these uh, with these pole these poles coming over here dancing with our women, bringing their bears. Um, uh, but. Uh, Anyway, so, um, uh, but then in uh, 1947, basically these camps were starting to get uh, decommissioned. Uh, the Poles were um, slowly sort of dispersing within the communities. One or two would go back to Poland, but the vast majority would stay, uh, would stay in England. Uh, and, uh, but they didn't know what to do with Wojtek. He was, he was now a tame bear. He'd, he'd lived all his life. Uh, with these soldiers, uh, so um, there was discussion about whether he should go back to. The, although he had never been to Poland, he was kind of seen as a Polish bear. He was offered uh, a place to go back to Poland, but the uh, the Poles were worried that he would use be either used for propaganda um, purposes or, or that, he, um, uh, and they didn't they didn't want that, um, and they didn't know what to do uh, with him, and they were. They were faced with the awful situation that, that they may actually have to um, actually kill him uh, because there was nothing uh, to do. But in the end, he uh, he was offered uh, a place in Edinburgh Zoo, and uh, it was there he went to live uh, in an enclosure. Now, I would love that this story has a great happy ending, but Wojtek didn't really enjoy being in the in the zoo, if I'm honest, because. He used to like hanging out with his mates, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. Uh, but, um, and so he kind of had quite a relatively solitary, he lived for a, a long time. He lived, uh, he lived until 1963 
so which is much longer than he would have lived out in, in the wild. But all the reports are what used to happen was um, uh, was that um, uh, the Poles used to come and visit him. And whenever he heard Polish being spoken, his ears would prick up and all of a sudden he'd kind of step out of this lethargy and he'd get really uh, excited and he'd kind of start pacing around. And the Poles would start uh, shouting, uh, hey Wojtek! And, uh, and they, would, uh, they would get their cigarettes and they would chuck them into the, uh, to the enclosure and he would happily eat them. And then sometimes they would like climb on over and, and climb into and start wrestling with him. And uh, much to the... Um, much to the dismay of the uh, zookeepers, these bloody poles coming over, feeding our bears cigarettes and wrestling with them. Um, and, uh, and this story kind of might have ended there with his death in, uh, in 1963. Kind of might have just sort of disappeared and just become uh, one of those uh, things. But I came aware of this story about uh, about uh, about five, six years ago, when I found this book. Uh, it was uh, written by Eileen Orr, and Eileen Orr is the little girl in this picture. She was so fascinated by this that she, um, she just, she, um, and she was telling people about it, and people weren't kind of believing it, so she wrote this book. I found this book in a bookshop, and I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when I picked up this book, because I had been told this story when I was a child. I was told it by my father, um, who was a soldier, who had, was, uh, was born in Poland, he was in uh, actually what is now U Ukraine, he was in Lvov when the Russians invaded. Uh, his father was a senior officer who was, uh, who was uh, captured uh, by the Russians and was, uh, was, mass was one of those 8,000 who was massacred in the, uh, um, in the Katyn Forest. And my father, uh, along with his mother, um, they were um, both sent to Siberia. Uh, they had uh, then uh, managed to escape and make that same journey, uh, and uh, had gone down through uh, through uh, Persia into Egypt, into Italy, been at the uh, Battle of Monte Cassino, and then uh, finally been uh, demobbed in the UK. And when I was a kid, my dad used to tell me about this bear that was in the army. That smoked, that smoked cigarettes and drank beer I didn't, and, and carried bombs. And I didn't, I, didn't, I, I kind of sort of semi-believed it, but not really, you know. You kind of believe stories that your uh, parents tell you, and then you find out about that Father Christmas, mm, and, they, and the tooth fairy, and then at that point you go, oh, and this thing about the, and this thing about the bear smoking cigarettes and holding, oh, another one of those. <laughs> You're not gonna get me this time. And so I picked up this book and it was really, it was really exciting. It was kind of like, oh no, this is for real. This is for real. But the sad thing is, my father had died the year before I found this book. So I'd been told these stories when I was about seven or eight. And I to, to be honest, I, I'd just totally forgotten about those stories for about kind of 35, uh, 40 years. And they'd just been parked away. And then I started looking up about it. And I found out there was another book and another book and another book, and another book, and a chocolate bar. <laughs> and he's on the back of a bus. And he's on the side of a, of a building in, uh, in Lutz. And they've made a beer about him. And there's, uh, if you go to London, the Sikorsky Museum, there's a, there's a, um, there's a statue of him. You'll see there, there's that uh, emblem I was uh, talking about before. And there's, uh, there's also, there's a statue in Imola. And there's a statue in Krakow. And there's a statue in the woods in Grimsby. There's no reports that he ever actually went to Grimsby. There was a, there was a Polish uh, settlement there, but there's no reports he was ever in Grimsby. If you go to Duns, though, which was the, local, the, uh, the nearest uh, town, there, is, uh, there he is holding um, a, a bear, holding a, um, a bomb. And then uh, Duns is... Uh, is uh, is twinned with a town in, in Poland, and I found this picture, they've got the same one. And then I saw this picture, and then underneath it, it said uh, uh, Wojciech, the statue of Wojciech the Bear, with, um, with Wojciech Narebski, which is Wojciech Narebski. And, and it was like, shit, Wojciech Narebski was one of my dad's best mates. And I remember Wojciech Narebski was one of the few, one of the 10% who kind of decided to go back to Poland. And I remember Wojciech Narebski, uh, when I was a, 
quite a young boy coming around and staying uh, with us. Uh, I only met him the once that I can remember, but I do remember like Christmas cards coming from Wojtek. Uh, and, uh, and if you read up about uh, this or have a look on YouTube, Wojtek Narebski is kind of, um, uh, is often, he's, he's the, he is the, is the soldier who kind of comes out. Uh, and is sort of talking uh, about him. He was known as uh, Little Wojtek and he got Big Wojtek. I'm not entirely sure, now the way that my dad told the story, I'm not entirely sure that my dad had ever actually came face to face, or that was the way I was always thinking. I, I wasn't sure that he came face to face with uh, Wojtek the bear, but I know that he knew Little Wojtek. So there was part of me that going, hang on, did I not get part of this story? Did my dad actually ever meet um, uh, Big Wojtek? Um, the um, uh, Big Wojciech had sort of, he'd have a nominated keeper uh, and in his later years uh, he had a, a keeper uh, here called, um, called uh, Piotr and when Piotr was absolutely heartbroken when, um, when Wojciech had to go to the uh, Edinburgh Zoo, um, the reports were that he he, he, he could never bring himself to go and visit uh, him because he was, he was kind of, um, it, it, it kind of broke his heart. Um, but if you go up uh, to Edinburgh in the park, um, they have recently uh, put a statue and uh, that's Piotr uh, with Wojtek. Now, um, my father's name was uh, Bolesław uh, Fialkowski. Um, but, uh, but his father, he was named after his father, um, who was also called Bolesław. So my father was called by his uh, second name, and his name was Wojtek. My name is Pete, or Piotr. So this is Piotr and Wojtek, me and my dad. Thank you very much.